So this is the Canaan Avalon Nano 3S. It's a personal Bitcoin miner slash personal heater. Now I've just done a full video review talking about this new heater, as well as how to get it all set up and up and running. And this Nano 3S is the successor to the original Nano 3. Now in the first video, I actually went over the key uh, improvements here and upgrades with the 3S. But as I've been playing with the two, I've actually been finding quite a few changes and improvements here to the point where I felt like it actually warranted a whole dedicated video. And so that's what this video is gonna be. Now to start things off, the big improvement here with the new Nano 3S is the fact that it's got some upgraded chips under the hood, which is gonna allow it to boost the maximum hash rate. On the original Nano 3, the maximum hash rate, uh, if we take a look over here, is going to be 4 terahash per second. With the new Nano 3S, it's actually going to go up by 50%, up to 6 terahash per second. Now, it's doing this while still pulling the same amount of power at 140 watts. And so for that reason, we're also going to be seeing a 50% improvement in efficiency as well. And then if we take a closer look at the displays themselves, you'll notice that obviously there's some uh, differences here in the UI. Uh, first off, we've got a square display here and then a round display on the newer one. Uh, additionally, this is gonna keep cycling between different display options while this one is gonna be fixed. Now, this is actually my favorite display option that gives me the stats. So it tells me things like how much power it's drawing, my current hash rate, uh, over here we can see like if, is it the high level, medium or low, uh, IP address, etc. We also do have the option over here to switch between you know different options so you can see there's a clock over there uh, or we can just go to like the manufacturer's logo but again kind of my preferred option is going to be uh, the information here with all the stats and showing the clock and stuff. We can see the time over there as well but again it's going to be cycling through the different options. Now over here there's actually two different buttons. Uh, we have like a power button right there if you want to turn it off. Uh, this is going to allow us to like manually switch through the different displays just like we've got over there. Uh, if we want to then switch between like the different, you know, high, medium and low hash rates, we can actually double press uh, this button right there. You can see it jump now to the low hash rate option. Uh, we can double press it again and I guess tough to see because it does the display cycling thing. So you can see it goes to medium and then we can double press it again to switch it over uh, to high. Uh, and then the same idea is going to be over there. Uh, we can just double press it like this. It's got a little audio feedback there, the beeps to let us know that it's switching to low, medium, and high. It does look like the display is also a little bit more responsive when you're switching between different modes as well. Now, if you wanna turn off the heaters, you can do that by just long pressing the power button here like this on the original Nano 3. And then on the 3S, same idea, you can just long press it like that and it's gonna go ahead and turn off your miner slash heater as well. Now let's go ahead and boot both of them back up here like this. Now, speaking of the display, there's also a new option here on the Nano 3S. And that is the introduction of a new lighting mode option available here in the app called Night Mode. And the idea here is with Night Mode is you can actually disable the uh, display right there, as well as the uh, blinking display light right here on the front of the heater. Now, we'll go ahead and do that. We're gonna go ahead and turn on Night Mode like this, and you're gonna see that the display is gonna go ahead and shut off on us uh, as we activate Night Mode. And then same idea over here, you can see like the main uh, LED display has turned off as well. Now this is gonna be helpful if you wanna run it like in a bedroom or something. Uh, if you wanna access maybe the clock or the stats, uh, you can just press the button right there and it'll light up here for three minutes uh, and show you the information and then it'll go back to sleep. Uh, looks like this display light right there also turns back on for three minutes and then again, uh, it's gonna shut itself off afterwards. That's not actually an option here uh, on the original Nano 3. And speaking of using it in a bedroom, this new one is actually noticeably quieter than the original as well. And to measure the volume differences, I've got an iPhone app here with like a decibel meter. Uh, this is gonna be a little bit inaccurate because I've got the microphone like right next to the miner. But when I'm running it here on the uh, Nano 3S at full blast, it's gonna be about 63 decibels. And sorry, I know that it's upside down here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, spin it around. If I do this uh, with the microphone pointing away, it does get a little bit quieter. And you'll notice it drops now down to like 47 decibels. That said, the fan here is kind of like this annoying background buzz sound. So despite the volume level, it is definitely gonna be more noticeable here on the original Nano 3. And then repeating the test here now with the newer Nano 3S, now that it's had a chance to warm up and get up to its full hash rate, I'll show you a clip here from when I'm not talking, but uh, the decibel level actually drops down to just 52 decibels. And then flipping the phone around to make it easier to read, and so the microphone is pointing away from the fan, uh, you'll notice here it actually drops down to just 36 decibels. So again, significantly quieter than with the original. 
And this noise difference is actually a bigger deal than I anticipated. It's gonna be helpful if you wanna run it in your bedroom, for example, in tandem with night mode, uh, to keep it quieter when you're asleep and so you don't get the same kind of like buzzing sound you get here with the uh, original Nano 3. Uh, I actually have this running in my office and a lot of times I'm having to turn it off if I'm doing YouTube videos or something, just to keep it a little bit quieter. I like to use kind of like a smart switch like this so I can integrate with my smart home system and just do it with my voice, with Alexa or something. Uh, but I actually feel less required to do that here with the newer one. And in my office, I've moved the newer Nano 3S to right in front of my keyboard so it can keep my hands toasty while I'm on the computer. And then the original Nano 3, I've actually moved down to my feet to keep my feet warm here at my desk. And as a bonus, my dog has been a fan of it as well. Uh, I've also noticed that the fan here on the Nano 3 is a little bit less distracting because it's farther away, especially if I'm on like a video call or something. But for YouTube videos, I do still prefer turning this off to keep my office that much quieter. Next, let's take a look at the two heaters here under a thermal camera. And we'll start here first with the original Nano 3. So temperature wise, it looks like the max is what, 65.5 degrees Celsius or so. Uh, and then if we move over here to the uh, 3S, it looks like the temperature is actually 70, 78 degrees. So even hotter uh, than the original one, even warmer. And this is actually with both of them here on the uh, maximum kind of like high settings. In terms of the pattern of the heat that comes out, it looks like they're pretty similar. You can see it's kind of a pattern here that comes right out of the middle or so. Uh, and then similar here on the, uh, the 3S as well. Both of these have been up and running all night. Um, so they've had a chance to warm up and kind of like heat up my desk here. But as you can see, uh, the heat patterns coming out are pretty similar, but we are getting quite a bit warmer temperatures here out of the newer 3S on top of the fact that it's also quieter uh, to boot. Now they've also made it easier to clean the 3S after the miners have been running for a little while here. Now the air is designed to come in here from the air intakes into the fans and then blow out the front here to keep the front nice and toasty. If you take a look at the original Nano 3, uh, we've got the air intake right here like this, but there's no way to remove anything here if you want to clean out the filter, if you get dog hair or dust or whatever in there. Uh, if we contrast that to the uh, newer 3S, uh, this one, we can't remove this part, but the filter actually does slide out the bottom here like this. And so if you want to clean it, uh, you're now able to do so. And in fact, there's a new option now in the app for the 3S where it tells you how dirty the filter is. That said, I've noticed that if I take it out and try to blow it out or clean it or something, this doesn't actually update to let me know if it's been cleaned or anything, but it does have some added information here uh, for the filter. Next, when it comes to internet connectivity, they both are available here with Wi-Fi. On the original 3, the Wi-Fi is actually built into the heater itself. On the newer 3S, there's actually a USB Wi-Fi dongle that you got to install uh, when you first get the miner. Now, what's cool about this is if you want to run this over Ethernet instead of Wi-Fi, you can actually do that. You can unplug this little USB Wi-Fi dongle, and then you can grab yourself like an Ethernet to USB adapter here like this, and then just plug it into the side of the miner. Now, that said, I have noticed that it doesn't work with all of the different adapters that are out there. I found some don't work and others do, and so I'll link in the description to the one that I found does work. But if you want to actually run it over Ethernet instead of over Wi-Fi, you now do have that capability here with the newer 3S. I've also noticed that in the app, there is an icon that'll let you know when it's connected over ethernet. Uh, and then the icon also changes when it's connected over Wi-Fi. Furthermore, if you compare it to the app for the original Nano 3, the newer one will also show you the signal strength when you're connected over Wi-Fi as well. That's admittedly not a big deal, but it is helpful. Then in terms of the UI, when you connect to the different heaters from a browser, this is actually different here between the two different miners. Now here's the original Nano 3. This one I think is a little bit more nerdy. There's kind of like more stuff going on here. Uh, and they've cleaned up the UI a little bit here, made it a little bit more attractive, I think, for the newer Nano 3S. Uh, that said, if we take a look over here, we do have some additional options for doing things like upgrading the uh, firmware, for example. If we take a look at the newer version, it can list the uh, firmware version here, but I don't see an option for like how I actually update the firmware. Uh, additionally, if we go back over here, we've got uh, kind of a different approach for you know some of your network configuration stuff, uh, as far as how you adjust all the different uh, mining parameters, your pools that you're using, et cetera. You do have that capability over here as far as how you set up the different pools that you wanna use, but again, I guess it's mostly a UI thing. The biggest difference that I noticed is actually, I think maybe like how you log in here. Uh, here, I'll go ahead and log out of both of them so that you can see. So we'll log out of the Nano 3 uh, as well as the 3S. We'll hit okay. Now for the original Nano 3, there's actually like a login and password. I think I actually prefer this option because I use a password manager and it can just fill it in for me and log in like that. With the newer one, there's no option. Instead, there's now actually a QR code that you need to scan with your phone. 
And I can see how this can be convenient for people if they don't want to use a username and password or something. But because of the fact that, again, I'm using a password manager that can autofill it for me, it's actually easier for me to not do the QR code and have to pull out my phone. I would love to see them offer an option here on the newer version to where you get both the QR code and the username and password so you can log in either way that you want. But either way, yeah, we do have the new uh, QR option here for the logins. Now these miners, I think, are designed to be pretty simple and easy to use. You just kind of plug them in, get them up and running. They look good, they work well. It's kind of a different approach than what we see with something like a Bitax here like this. These are open source projects. They're not closed source here, uh, like these heaters. So with these ones, if you're really into tweaking and customizing and working on you know, firmware development or different cases or fans or housings or whatever else, there's a lot more that's available here uh, with the bit axes. That said, these are actually, I think, a better bang for the buck in terms of how much hash rate you get for the dollar. Uh, and so even though the price here actually has gone up with the 3S compared to the original three, which I guess is in part of the fact because, well, there's a bunch of new features, the hash rate has gone up by 50% as well. Um, so I guess maybe it's not as cheap of a deal as the original one was. Uh, it's still going to be a better bang for the buck in terms of hash rate for the dollar compared to something like a Bitax. And then obviously here with these miners, you also get the heat that's generated so you can use them as a heater to keep you nice and toasty, which is again, another big benefit of something that you don't get from something like a Bitax here like this. Now, if you'd like to pick up one of the uh, Nano 3Ss, I think the original 3s are being discontinued and they're switching over to the 3Ss. They're available from a number of different uh, distributors. There's different sellers all around the world. And so I'll link to a variety of different options for you down in the video description. So you can go ahead and pick one of these up as well. And so as you can see, Kanan has actually made quite a few improvements here with this new 3S compared to the original 3. As far as some of my favorite improvements, I think the highlights would be things like, of course, the uh, increased hash rate, 50% uh, bump from four terahash per second up to six terahash. I also definitely appreciate the fact of how much quieter the newer one is, something that I wasn't expecting, which is really useful here in my office when I'm shooting videos or just even running it all day uh, here at my desk. Uh, I do definitely like the upgraded display here that's available. I like the fact that the fan is now easier to clean out over time. Uh, and then there's also little things like the fact that now it's available to be used with not only Wi-Fi, but also Ethernet if you prefer. Uh, there's a new night mode that's available if you want to run it in your bedroom. Plus, the newer version is now a bit warmer as well. Again, these are designed to be kind of like personal heaters if they're running just kind of like right in front of you here like this. They're not designed to heat up an entire room or anything, but the added heat output that you get here with the new model is definitely a nice bonus. And so, again, as I mentioned before, if you'd like to pick one up, I'll put some links in the video descriptions to not only the miners, the heaters themselves, but also some of the helpful accessories like the USB to Ethernet adapter. And so with that said, yeah, I think this is a really nice evolution here from Kanan uh, with their personal heaters. I know different Different features and different changes, of course, are going to appeal to different people. But overall, yeah, I've been really happy here uh, to see this newer version of the Nano 3. Uh, if you're interested in uh, Bitcoin and uh, Bitcoin devices and tech here like this, definitely subscribe uh, and get notified for when new videos like this here go live so that you can continue to stay up to date uh, with all things Bitcoin. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you're all doing great and I'll see you in the next video.